Hello and welcome to Love Anything Art. Don't forget to check out my second channel, Frugally Delicious. I make budget food on a budget. I will be doing a fun little project today. It's going to kind of come out looking like a geostone. I don't know. It's going to be kind of funky and fresh and I hope you stick around and see what it comes out to looking like. I'm really, really actually happy with the results of this project. I was a little scared. <laughs> Sometimes I get scared as I'm doing things. It makes sense in my mind and then I plan it out and do it and then nope. Nope, nope, nope. I'm going to be using five different ink colors. You can choose any colors you like. I was kind of going for some purple, blue, pink kind of a look to it. I didn't want anything too crazy in mind. But you can you know, mix and match yours, make different ones. You could make a solid yellow one. It, you could really just kind of experiment. And I did take some paint and I picked out colors that were similar to the inks that I was using. Not quite exactly the same, obviously, but I actually wanted that. I want the outsides of my chopped pieces to be different than the insides. That's how you're going to get your contrast. Just rolling mine out so that I can put my ink on more of the surface. You'll have to decide at this point which color you want on which section. I forgot to mention earlier I did cut these into different thicknesses because each layer is going to be a different layer <laughs> and it's going to be a bullseye so the center you're not going to need a lot of clay and then the next layer you're not going to need as little clay and then you're just going to need a little bit more with each layer. So. This is just kind of how I decided to lay mine out. I have, you know, my blue and purple, which are going to come out looking pretty similar. So I didn't want those stacked next to each other. So this is going to be my layer. It goes from the left to the right. So the right's going to be the outer and the left will be the inner. You can kind of just decide at the end of the video, you know, which, which way you want to make yours and which color scheme you want to go with and the pattern you want to make in that. I'm not going to mix mine all the way. I think that's how you're going to get your marbled effect and more of a 3D kind of a dimensional look to your piece. So just kind of marbling my pieces a little bit. Just mix it until your heart says, you know what, that's as mixed as it needs to be. Got my purple there and then my pink. And you'll see at the bottom that I didn't mix that barely at all lots of the original translucent clay in there it's going to come out really pretty i did the same with the blue on the outside rim it's not as mixed and i did get a little bit of the pink in there i am totally not worried about it you're not going to even be able to tell in the end and even if you did i think it would just honestly add to the uniqueness of the piece I have my carrot color and then my bubblegum color bubblegum comes out very very pretty in the translucent ink scheme of things. I'm going to stack mine up so that I can start chopping it. I don't want to have really, really thin chopped pieces. I want my pieces to be larger chunks. So just kind of folding it up. I'm not mixing it anymore and just folding it so that it's thicker. You'll see each color here, you have a little bit more clay. So that is a good thing. I was also worried a little bit about not having enough clay, but it actually kind of stretched out and you'll see towards the end there when I start mixing everything together, it came out fine. I had the, I had a good amount of clay, but you can always use more if you want to. And if you make too much, you can use these chopped pieces in other projects. Like I said earlier, I'm going to make these chunks rather large. You can have a couple small pieces in there. You know, everybody needs a little bit of variety in their life. <laughs> have all of my chopped pieces on there. It looks so pretty already, I think. I just love all those colors. Trying to unmix mine and get them unstuck as much as possible so that when I put the paint on there, I can co coat them all really, really well. It took forever for this paint to dry. <laughs> 
I don't know what the deal was. I've never had paint take so long to dry. And it was all of them. So it wasn't just like one color wasn't drying. It was all of them. I mean, seriously, I probably walked away for two hours. I kept coming back and mixing it a little bit so that the parts that weren't exposed can get exposed and it could dry better. But yeah, it took a while. So hopefully yours doesn't take as long. I guess maybe uh, it's really cold so it doesn't want to dry. I don't know. Just make sure you thoroughly coat them. You do need all the pieces to be thoroughly coated, right? And just to kind of further help dry it out, I decided to, after mixing it, put it on a clean piece of tin foil. And that way it's not sitting in a big puddle of wet paint. You know, trying to help the process along. And I do reuse my tin foil. I just wash this off in the sink and then I reuse it. So again, I have my colors. They do need to dry really, really well before mixing them up. Otherwise, the colors are all going to bleed together and it's going to become a big old jumbled up mess. And I don't like big jumbled up messes. But if you like jumbled up messes, <laughs> I suggest you just go ahead and mix it when it's wet. <laughs> And again, to help further dry it, it was still slightly damp. I put it on another piece of tin foil, cleaned the other one, and then waited a little bit longer. Then I decided to add a little bit of shimmer powders on there. You can add whatever kind of powders you want. You could probably even add some glitter if you wanted to. I do want the pieces to be well coated. And if you'll look back at the thumbnail, you can really see the sparkles come out in that. I was really, really happy. I'm always afraid that it's going to lose a lot of its luster as it gets mixed, but it held up well this time. I do need a little bit of bacon bond because I was a struggling folks. <laughs> it was a struggle to get it to stick together because it was just all, you know, like dusty powder on the outside. <laughs> But put some bacon bond on there just a little bit. I didn't want soupy clay. And then I had my center layer, which was the bubble gum, working from left to right on my colors originally. And then the next one, I do need to coat it again in some bacon bond. And if you don't care about getting your hands all wet, you can go ahead and um, take the gloves off. It probably would have been better. And I have really tiny hands, so all gloves are big. There are no gloves that fit my hand. <laughs> But once you kind of get it flattened into like a single layer piece, then you can start rolling it to get it to stick together. If it doesn't 100% stick together, it's okay. As you build up each layer, the clay is going to start sticking together a lot more. So don't think you have to get it all nice and soupy to get it to stick together. It'll be alright. And then once you have it rolled out to his why did you think you need it? And I was so happy it worked out. I was like, this is not going to work because I didn't have enough clay. <laughs> but it did. I just had to keep stretching and stretching. And it did not ruin the effect of the piece like whatsoever. So just stretch it out. Get it to fit around your center piece. And then basically you're just going to kind of continue to do that through the layers. And I want it to kind of break it up a little bit here. I'm putting a little bit of blue. I would kind of do that. Make a light layer and then a dark layer. Just so you can get some contrast in your piece and it's not just, you know, all one solid color. There's a little bit of, you know, breakup in it. Once you kind of have it into your bullseye, all your layers are on there. You'll just roll it gently. I'm not trying to elongate it or anything like that. Just trying to get it all stuck together. And then I'm going to gently start flattening it using my hand at first and then bringing in the old handy dandy roller. You don't want to roll it like super flat, super fast, and I'm really not going to roll it too flat either. <laughs> it needs to be a pretty good thickness. I think the more you roll it down, the more you're going to lose your pattern. But if you kind of want to experiment and do some thicker ones and some thinner ones, just cut it in half and then you can continue rolling if you want. You know, you could play with it. Maybe you want to do different thicknesses for your piece. You could do that too. Once you kind of have it rolled out to the thickness you want, then you can start cutting up your clay. Couldn't decide 
right off the bat exactly how thick I wanted it. So that's kind of me here playing with it. I'm like, mm, that needs to be a little thinner. I'm like, mm, no, I'm scared. No, I'm not. Okay, no, I'm going to give it a try because I can't unroll it if I roll it too much. And I liked that. I was really, really glad that I stopped. Still has a nice pattern inside and I can kind of still stretch out the clay and still not lose any of the the prettiness that's been created along the way. Just cut off the messy ends. I cleaned up everything and now I'm going to start working my pieces. This is the end piece from each of them. I just kind of stretched it and rolled it a little bit. They came out really, really pretty. And I thought, you know what? These would just be perfect as a little pair of earrings. I thought they were really cute. Really fun. It's like the center of a rock when you cut it open. One of those really, really pretty stone rocks with all the crystals in it. That's what it kind of reminds me of. At this point, you can do a couple of things. You could shave it off like I did on that last one and make a bunch of pieces like that. Or you can shave off the top layer and, you know, you just keep shaving off, shaving off. And then you can put all of those on a solid piece of clay or a piece of translucent clay. Or you can do like I'm going to do and I'm just going to cut large chunks out of mine. I'm going to make a veneer and then I can cut out my pieces. I think you can kind of play around. Maybe you could do a couple of different things with it. If you had a large enough piece, cut it in half. Make some long pieces like this for like your earrings. And then make the other idea I was talking about. And then you can make this idea. I don't know. You could just depends on how much clay you used and how far you want to take the project and experiment. But the colors in this really, really came out really pretty together. And I just love that center pink color. It's very fiery and I don't know. It's very fitting, I think, for a center color of a piece. Just roll it out. I'm not trying to roll it out like really, really thin or anything. I kind of liked the thickness it was at, but I did need to connect everything. And if yours isn't connecting for some reason, you can always use a little bit of bacon bond between each of the sections and then kind of roll it. I'm also just stretching out each of the little plaques in there and uh, just trying to stretch out that design so I can see it a little bit better. But you can do whatever you want, stretch it as much as you want. I mean, totally up to you. And then decide what you want to cut out, what you want to make, what beautiful things you want to make for yourself, for your shop, for friends, for family, for gifts, whatever you want. And this is the first one. I really, really like it. If you'll look in the thumbnail, you can really see in the purple parts the little shimmering glimmer of the powder I used. And you can use any old makeup powder you have that's just got a sparkly shimmer to it. And then these are the pieces. I did decide to go ahead and make some earrings. I just made a backing out of some of the scraps and then put that on the back. You could actually use these earrings both ways, the front and the back. They both came out very, very pretty. So I like that, a two-way kind of uh, earrings. And then this was just a little bit I had left for the scraps. So I always like to show you what I make from the scraps. This is it. I just put it in a mold and that was it. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. And thank you so much for watching. Bye.